Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Lasky and Mystical Theology. We're going to take a look at uh, Chapter 6. It's going to be the Doctrine of uh, Anthropology, the uh, Doctrine of Man, and especially the Doctrine of Man as the image of God. Let's go to block one, image of God in a state of becoming. Man is a microcosm made in the image of God. Therefore, we seek the idea of God when defining a doctrine of man. The idea of God. The soul and the body together reflect God's image. Spirit is joined to the body created by the Word and the Holy Spirit. So it's got to be a holistic view of the image of God. By the Word and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit was breathed into man, a poron. The effluence of the invisible divinity was breathed into man. The effluence of the invisible divinity, the divine part that lives within us, creates that longing for eternal life. Our soul becomes the breath of God. Let's take a look at 1.5. Becoming by the breath of God. The soul is light, shut up in the body. It must be helped by that which is greater than the self. So that we can achieve and reach for our portion of deity. So that we can nurture the image of God within us. Image of God as our portion of deity. We are intimately connected to God's grace. Our soul participates in the divine energia. We are illumined by the archetypal light. We are illumined by the archetypal light, which means the archetype of Christ as light, the light of the world. The image of God is illumined inside us by the light of Christ. He is the light of the world. Man, image of God, reflects the archetypal light. While in communion with God, God has bestowed good upon us. We share in God's goodness. The image of God shares in God's goodness. The image of God is in a state of becoming. It's dynamic and in a state of becoming, free from secular determinism and able to follow judgment, judgment of God and our own discernment, and with an eschatology of an end of theosis, reunification with the Father. The entire man is image of God. But from that note 8, 1, 8, let's take away from that that the image of God is not a fixed static entity inside of us. It's a dynamic entity that needs to be nurtured and furthered in its eschatological quest and goal of reunification with the Father. So it's dynamic and a potentiality that needs to become an actuality and move forward. So in block one, let's take from away from block one, let's take away note eight, that the image of God is dynamic and in a state of becoming and is a potentiality needing to be nurtured toward actuality and maturity. Okay, usually the key moment is the second moment, and this time it is a significant second moment. Let's go to block two and take a look at a Christian anthropology by Lasky. A person equals that which distinguishes, distinguishes us from a human nature. Individual equals personhood plus nature. An individual includes our character traits. Now our fallen nature is the one that is given over to egoism. Our fallen nature becomes followed when we give ourselves over to egoism and self-determinism. We must negate egoism. So block two, note three, to acquire freedom over a fallen nature is uh, something we do through asceticism and negation. Asceticism simply means 
deny the self and take up the cross and negation of self-will. We affirm our likeness to the divine nature and uh, we desire to heal the fragmented self. We desire to heal the fragmented self. The divided or fragmented self is where we shut ourselves up in the limitations of a particular human nature. In other words, we shut ourselves up in a self-determination rather than seeking God. We need liberation from this particularity. We need to negate egoism and recognize the one common communal nature with others that we share with other human beings. In other words, quit being wrapped up in the self and consider others. Have an attitude toward others of community, our common communal nature. Is where we become and initiate that nurturing of the image of God. We take up what Laske calls evangelical living. So we nurture the image of God within us through evangelical living. We overcome sin by evangelical living. We are confronted by a personal God who calls us to theosis reunification with the Father. It's the call of Christ who calls us to reunification with the Father. It's a call to theosis. We must fulfill the will of God through our human freedom by governing the passions of our fallen nature. So we must uh, discern the inclinations of the fallen nature. So note, block 2, note 9, theosis means to assimilate our nature into the divine nature. And that can only be realized Beyond our choosing, it's something we need something more powerful than our own will to do this. Grace must intervene. 8C, 28C, grace must intervene to lift us out of egoism and to nurture the image of God within us and to lift us into reunification with the Father. Grace must intervene. And it intervenes by entering the faculty of the noose mind and through communion with God. We have been given the gift of communion with God. That is the intervention of grace. And we're going to wrap up with just that in block three, the intervention of grace. The only way we can nurture that state of becoming of the image of God, the only way that we can truly define a true Christian anthropology is through the intervention of grace. We need help from that which is greater than ourself. So, quickly, go to block one and note nine. Note eight. Go to block one, note eight. Image of God shares in God's goodness. The image of God is in a state of becoming. And we are freed from secular determinism and enabled to follow God's judgment and to move toward the eschatological goal of theosis reunification with the Father and the entire person, body and soul is involved in this eschatological goal. And then in block two we'll go to nine. Theosis means to assimilate our nature into the divine nature beyond our simple choosing. Grace must intervene, and we must take up communion with God. In order to nurture the image of God within us, we must commune with God through prayer, through meditation, and through Scripture, through prayer, meditation, and Scripture. Those three are essential. Prayer, meditation, and Scripture are essential for our communion with God. So, The solution to sin is the intervention of grace. Let's go to block three. Habit. Evil is a condition, not a nature. The nature of good is stronger than the habit of sin. The nature of good. Sin is a disease of the free will. The will becomes attracted to vanity. Remember Ecclesiastes. And the self becomes resistant to God's grace. The battle of the will and temptation. Within the self, we battle... The will of God versus demonic will. 
There's also a temptation from without, prosbale, prosbale, temptation from without. And if you look at the Greek translation, prosbale means attack. When we are tempted, that's an attack on the image of God. That is an attack on the image of God. Sin begins when we consent to this attack of temptation. We are tempted by an intruding image or an intruding thought. We sin by turning toward the world instead of God. We enter into sensate living rather than living in the realm of the spirit. The will hardens. The will becomes hardened. And that is, brings about 3.6, the resultant deprivation of grace due to a determination from within and out exousia, a determination from within, image of God is negated and image of formless matter emerges, which lets the passions reign in the self. That is uh, an excellent description of the result of sin right there. But the hope is 3-7, the plan of God, the plan of God from the very beginning of creation overcomes deprivation of grace because Christ broke the tyranny of sin and Christ opened the way of theosis. Luke 12:49. Christ did this by pouring out his spirit of fire upon the earth. Now I'm going to read 7 again because that is a way to close this out in hope. The plan of God overcomes deprivation of grace because Christ broke the tyranny of sin and Christ opened the way of theosis reunification with the Father. Luke 12:49 tells us Christ pours his spirit of fire out upon the earth to accomplish this end. So it is by the kenosis, self-emptying of Jesus Christ and being obedient even unto the cross and through his passion and through his resurrection and through his ascension, we have access to a nurtured image of God within us and the opportunity to gain victory over the tyranny of sin and the possibility of a way of theosis reunification with the Father, all because of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's a good place to wrap this, up, this lesson up. That is chapter 6 on the image of God and the likeness. That's pages 114 to 135. And it's a beautiful lesson on the intervention of grace that overcomes the tyranny of sin to give us a true Christian anthropology. And we're going to pick up next time on page 136 and chapter 7.